Four months ago, I made a video showcasing how the free program EB Synth, which is typically used to apply painterly effects to live action footage, can actually be used for animation, specifically traditional 2D animation. I had always been meaning to follow up with a tutorial on how to do it, since it's kind of different from the typical animation workflow, but it's also very easy to explain, so let's get into it. We'll start with this clip of Thumper from Disney's 1941 animated classic, Bambi. First, we'll convert the footage into an image sequence, which can be done in programs such as Adobe Premiere or even Blender, which is free and always will be. I would actually argue Blender is better than Premiere for exporting because it has pretty intuitive cropping tools and also doesn't crash constantly, but that's a whole other can of worms. Next, we'll choose a frame that shows off as much of the character as possible, so EB Synth actually has something to work with. For example, here we'll choose a frame where Thumper is mid-speech, so that the program knows what the inside of his mouth looks like. Once we have the frame selected, we'll load it into our drawing program of choice. Here I'm using Paint Tool Sci, but you could use Krita, you could use GIMP, you could use Clip Studio, hell you could even use Blender again. Blender can do everything. Anyway, here I'm just tracing over the line work. I'm going to color it later, but for now I'm keeping things black to make things easier. Paint Tool Sci's line work features are pretty unparalleled. Well, except for Blender, which is kind of a parallel and also free. Anyway, after I'm done tracing the line work, I start to color pick from the original frame. If you're a fan of DeviantArt recolors, you might consider taking this opportunity to give Thumper bright neon fur or something. Here I'm just doing a boring old remaster of the original Disney footage with the original colors. Nothing special really. Now I'm coloring in the line work. I've mentioned in one of my previous videos that I love this soft look of colored outlines, particularly in animation. It helps to find the form while also staying more or less out of the way, allowing the colors to shine through. And now for the shading, pretty much the entire reason I'm doing this in the first place. Good shading adds depth and dimension to the art, while also complementing the base colors. This is why I never use pure black for my shading. I pick a moderately dark color that fits the scene, and add the shading on a multiply layer, which allows me to shade the layer underneath with the color I've selected. And I'll also throw in some highlights to further separate Thumper from the background. For these, I add a shine layer. But if your art program doesn't have a shine layer, it probably has an add layer, which does pretty much the same thing. While we're here, I'll also do some color grading to make things pop a bit more. And now the moment you've all been waiting for. Once you've exported the drawing, give it a name that matches the frame. Heh <laughs> rhyme. Put it in a folder and call it Keys. Make sure the original image sequence is in its own folder called Video. These don't have to be the names, but these are the directory names EB Synth uses by default. I like to keep things consistent. Then just open EB Synth, drag and drop the directories into their respective slots, and hit the Synth button. Now, while we wait for that to finish, I would like to thank one of the commenters on my demo video for pointing out that EB Synth has left alpha, and is now even more ridiculously easy to use. Like, I titled this video EB Synth Tutorial, but the actual EB Synth part is only one sentence long. That's how easy it is! The program has automatically figured out how long the sequence is, where the keyframe is, and it even runs on the GPU instead of the CPU, leading to much shorter render times. Also, the program is green, rather than purple. I'm sure green is also somehow more optimized than purple. Even the icon is optimized. The old icon was EBS, but now it's simply E. Anyway, we're done rendering. Let's take a look at the result. Now, obviously there's a whole bunch of artifacts, but we kind of have something here. All the intricate details I added to the keyframe are present here in this sequence. Some fun, huh, Bambi? When I first used this program, I was genuinely shocked at how quickly I could create full shaded versions of previously flat animation. I've tried animation. Animation, particularly traditional animation, can take days. And most of that time is spent tying down rough sketches, then tracing finished line work over that, and drawing shading over that, the last time I tried making a fully complete animation, it took me four days. Now, of course, the animation itself will probably still take a while, but this program has the potential to greatly reduce the amount of time spent in the shading, lighting, and even coloring department. This whole example took me less than an hour to do. Now, one thing I had to sort of figure out on my own was how to add more than one keyframe. 
I'm too lazy to set up another example, so I'm going to use my Robin Hood sequence. Since the original line work is super rough, I had to blend together multiple keyframes to keep things relatively consistent. EB Synth lets you export multiple sequences at once, but it doesn't have any way to blend those sequences together. So what you have to do is bring the footage into a separate program and find a way to transition between all of the separate sequences. What I used to do back in the alpha days was use a crossfade in Adobe Premiere. This worked well enough for a while, but now EB Synth not only automatically loads in all the keyframes, not only uses the GPU to make rendering super fast, but also lets you export the results directly into After Effects, where the opacity of each of the sequences has already been automatically keyframed such that each sequence blends seamlessly together. If you don't have After Effects, well, guess which free program you can use instead? Windows Movie Maker, of course. Anyway, just open Blender, load in the sequences, line them up, go to the Opacity slider, and press I to set a keyframe. Then, just make it so that each sequence fades into the next, right at the point where the keyframes come in and the sequences are at their most refined. The clips actually have a visual indicator for their opacity, which should make a smooth line down towards the end of the project. Then, just hit Ctrl F12 to render, and you should have a pretty sweet and buttery sequence on your hands. It just isn't done that way. So yeah, that's about it. Thank you very much for watching. I suppose I should tell you to subscribe, since I will definitely continue to make videos that are more or less in this style. I have plenty of ideas for art tutorials, animation tutorials, general commentary videos where I talk about my feelings, which tend to get less views, but plenty of positive comments, so that's nice. Anyway, like I said, thank you for watching, and as always, stay cute. Mmm. <laughs> mm. Bad me.